Hi again, YouTubers. So this is a review slash comparison video on the Chanel Matte Lumiere Foundation and the Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus Foundation. Now, I purchased these fairly recently, uh, but long enough to have tested them out different ways. And I purchased them for the purpose of possibly wearing them on my wedding day. Um, the reason that I was looking for something that was a little bit more full coverage and also something that had really good staying power and was matte on the skin is because it's going to be summertime, it's going to be hot out, and I have oily combination skin, which is oily on my uh, forehead and down my nose, like breakouts around my chin and then my cheeks. Um, I feel like I say that in every video lately. Um, and so I was looking for something that was really going to have that extra staying power. Now I have tried Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Plus before and I have a full review on it and it's a really nice product. Right now I am the color 40 in it and I have it on today. The key I find with this foundation and any foundation honestly is to get a color that matches your skin tone or if they don't have one that matches exactly, uh, which is my case in the Chanel, to go just a tiny bit less because it's easier to add bronzer on top of it than it is to get that color that might be a tad bit too dark because when it's a tad bit too dark, if you have oils on your skin, it tends to kind of make them a little bit orange after a while throughout the day. So um, the, sh the, I'm sorry, the Matte, Vel <laughs> Matte Velvet Plus, I used to have the color 30, which was way, way too light for me. And then I got color matched to this to 55, which was okay, but just had uh, just a slight, slight orange tint um, to it. So I then went back in and I got number 40. 40 seems to be working well for me. Honestly, for my skin, I think the best would be a mix of 40 and 55 for some reason. Um, and sorry, my hair feels like it's got a piece of hair hanging off of it bothering my neck. Um, so that is my only problem with this. There is nothing that is like my exact match right now. So um, that is much closer, however, than the Chanel Matte Lumiere. Now, this one is the Long Lasting Soft Matte Makeup. And I really, really like this as well. But again, their color range just doesn't match me exactly. So I went with number 40, which is beige. They originally matched me. This is ridiculous. It was, I think it was number 100 and it was like soft honey and it was like a 5.0 intensity and this is like a 2.0. So that right there tells you it was off ridiculously. So a little bit of information about these. These are both made to be a matte finish with a very good and long staying power to them. Now I have on the mat today and I don't, you can see my forehead, I have no powder on anything. So don't be afraid of the word matte on these because they do set matte, but if you have combination or oily skin, um, you're still gonna have like a dewiness to your skin. I did not powder other than bronzer like up on my forehead and down around my chin. I don't have any additional powder on um, and I still have a nice glow to my skin. Uh, my biggest fear has always been when I've seen all these different matte foundations and so on and so forth that I'm gonna look too matte and that's okay for some things if you can add the highlight back where you want it, but I never want to look like my skin's flat. So I like to have a bit of a sheen to it, which both of these products have done very, very well. Staying power on both of them is great for me. Um, I believe the Makeup Forever is definitely oil free. I believe the Matte Lumiere is oil free as well. Just not 100% sure on that. Hmm, doesn't really say. Um, but I think, I believe it is. So, little bit about people have asked me how I apply these because the key part with these is they are a thicker foundation and they can look a little bit cakey so people that have tried it have asked me multiple times like how do you apply this what's the best way to put it on without it looking cakey and without it getting um, that kind of settled in look um, where you can still see it on your skin or streaky or anything like that so what I tend to do with these, both of them, I shake them up obviously very well. I put some on my fingers. I put a very small amount on my fingers, not the amount I'm going to need to do my whole face. 
I rub my fingers together to warm it up and I start on my cheeks. I pat it on my cheeks, a little bit on my forehead, my nose, and my chin. And then I use my fingers to go and rub it into my skin. And I do this again one more time, but I start opposite. I go like this, okay? And I just rub it in. And the warmth of your fingers also helps to kind of smooth this out and make it so it doesn't look too cakey. The next thing I do, and this one's actually dry right now, my other one's in the bathroom, is I take a beauty blender sponge. You do not have to use a beauty blender sponge for this, by the way. Oops, sorry. Um, you can use just, these are just from Face Secrets. You can just use a latex, you know, what are these um, called? Ultra wedges, whatever. Again, dampen it just slightly. You can use even Fix Plus and spray it and then squeeze them out. And then I kind of use a towel and just kind of rub it on, rub it between the towel to get off any excess moisture. But by doing that, and then I go around and I just stipple it over my skin or with this same thing, don't wipe, that's gonna cause streaks. I just pat it in, it gets rid of any, sorry, I should have those out. It gets rid of any excess that sat on top or didn't go all the way in. Plus it gets rid of those like lines, those streaky cakey lines that you can get. Um, specifically, make sure you go around the edges of your nose, under your eyes, anywhere that you might have creasing. Um, and this really works amazing with, with these foundations. Um, I have tried lots of other things. I have tried traditional foundation brushes. I've tried my Sigma F80, which is like my favorite for all foundations. Um, and I find with these foundations, because they are such a heavy, thick foundation overall, that your fingers are honestly the best way to go about this. That's just what has worked for me. I've tried stippling brushes, I've tried it all. It just does work the best for me and gives me the best finish without being cakey or heavy or too matte by doing it this way. Um, now, a little bit of additional information. I want People had asked me how it compared to other things and I just wanna throw these in there for mentions. Uh, people asked me how the Chanel Matte Lumiere compares to the Pro Lumiere. Here's the, Pro Lumiere is being discontinued. They are coming out with a new formula. This one is old. You can see there's barely, there's that's all that's left in it. Like, I can barely get anything out. I was color 30 in this, which is shell, intensity 1.5. So they were totally off when they did 5.0. But anyway, um, I like the Pro Lumiere. My problem with the Pro Lumiere and how it compares, this has a higher concentration of pigment meaning it has it is much more full coverage which is funny you would think the matte would be a fuller more full coverage oops sorry oh, new phone and i'm still figuring out how to work it um so essentially this to me has more coverage however and it's a beautiful beautiful finish the problem with this is on my combination oily skin it doesn't matter what i use underneath of it what primers i use anything Within two hours, it slipped off my skin. And so I'm hoping that the new Pro Lumiere possibly resolves that issue. That might be uh, a good plus for that because I love the coverage. I love the finish of this. It's more of like a satin finish. Um, it's beautiful. I absolutely love this. I wish this would stay for my wedding day because I love, love, love the finishes for the first couple hours, past the first couple hours. Ugh, don't like it. So, I've got all kinds of sounds going on today. So, that is how it compares to the Pro Lumiere. Then people ask me how it compares to the Vita Lumiere Aqua. This, I, I can't even compare this. This has a very, very light coverage. Um, I'd say sheer to buildable up to medium coverage. It's a totally different basis. I don't compare it to this whatsoever. Um, it stays very well on my skin um, and another thing people it's interesting because this is water-based but it also has alcohol in it so people were asking me how this works with a combination oily skin the alcohol that's in this whichever type it is because it of course doesn't say um, helps it stay on oily combination skin so um, oh and I just want to mention too for the makeup forever and the matte Lumiere I do not use a primer with these um, Chanel Pro Lumiere, I have to use a primer. I don't use one usually with the Chanel. I've kind of gotten away from primers, guys. I don't know why. It just, I don't like them as much anymore. It just doesn't work for me. So, um, 
That being said, the next two I want to mention are the two that are probably closer to this. And people ask me how they compare. And one of them is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Stay in Place Makeup. This is what it looks like. It does not come with a pump. This is a MAC pump that I purchased. I have the color 3N1 Ivory Beige. Very, very comparable. If you've used this, these are very similar, the Chanel and the, and the Makeup Forever. Very similar. Um, I feel like the Estee Lauder has a little bit more of a sheen to it um, than the other two. It is not quite as matte, but it's a beautiful finish. I apply it the exact same way and it stays all day on me. Um, but people seem to have problems with Estee Lauder finding the right color match. Um, of the lines, I would say Makeup Forever probably has the biggest line of colors. Um, Estee Lauder being second, I had no, I had to go back and forth a couple times, but once I got the right color, it's amazing. I love it. It's probably one of my favorite foundations as well. And then the next one I'm going to mention that I've had for a while, and this is the Guerlain, I don't even know how to say this, but it's the Extreme Wear Foundation in all gold packaging. I have the number three. Um, I had the number five last year in the summertime. Um, number three matches me perfectly. Um, I might pick up five because five would be good. Something about the undertone of, of this product works amazing with my skin and everybody compliments me when I wear it. But I think if I had the five and I mixed it in with these others, it might actually balance them out to be the perfect shade. I don't know, just kind of throwing some things off. Um, but honestly, this one is kind of a mix between the like the Makeup Forever matte velvet um, ones and the Estee Lauder Double Wear because this is an extreme wear. It doesn't move. It has a beautiful finish. I don't find any oils breaking through throughout the day, anything. Um, I apply it the exact same way, but this one is has a primer and a powder built into it as well. Um, but something about their undertone, their color range is very small, very minimal, but something about their color range just works amazing with my skin. I have no idea why. Um, so this is one of my, my favorites. These two probably, for how they match my skin, probably my favorites, but I love the finish and the stay of these two. So um, that's pretty much all of my information on these. I know people wanted to get my uh, take on these two, so I wanted to compare it to some others so people might have other options available to them. Um, they are all fairly similar in price range. All the Chanel obviously are similar. The Guerlain is right there with the Chanel. The Estee Lauder and, and Makeup Forever are going to be a little bit less expensive. So. Um, Chanel can be bought at your local department stores, uh, Estee Lauder as well. The Guerlain and Makeup Forever can be purchased at Sephora. So I hope you guys found this helpful. I hope it gave you some information about these foundations and some comparables you might find. And uh, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day. Bye.